Hello and welcome to YouTube Lesson 10 Evolution by Natural Selection. This lesson is for students on both the Triple Science Pathway and the Combined Science Pathway. And my name's Mrs Keenan, Science Director, and I'm going to talk you through this lesson. So the first thing I want you to think about is who is this in the picture? Also appears on the £10 note. And what is he most famous for? 20 seconds just to think about who is this. OK, brilliant. If you've got Charles Darwin, give yourselves a massive pat on the back. It is Charles Darwin, a very famous scientist who was around many, many years ago. So we're going to learn more about Charles Darwin today. OK, so for our outcomes today, for our challenge outcome, we are going to describe Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. And for the Aspire outcome, we are hoping we are going to be able to explain how evolution leads to speciation. So evolution is the change in inherited characteristics of a population over time. Evolution has taken place over millions of years and is responsible for all the living things on Earth today. The theory of evolution states that all species of living things have evolved from simple life forms that first developed more than three billion years ago. So natural selection is often referred to as survival of the fittest. What do you think is meant by this? 30 seconds just to make a note of your ideas. Okay, what did you come up with? What are Darwin's finches and why are they so important to biologists? The study of finches led to the development of one of the most important scientific theories of all time. But how did this come about? In December 1831, a naturalist called Charles Darwin boarded the HMS Beagle bound on a surveying voyage to South America. Whilst the ship and crew carried out coastline surveys, Darwin was free to explore the islands en route. In 1835, the Beagle arrived at the Galapagos Islands near Ecuador. What Darwin found there surprised him greatly. As well as giant tortoises and marine iguanas, Darwin collected and preserved a variety of different songbirds called finches. Upon returning to the UK, he examined them together with ornithologist John Gould and made some fascinating discoveries. The scientists observed that the birds were all similar to a single type of finch found on mainland South America, suggesting that these mainland finches had originally colonized the island. However, the Galapagos finches were all slightly different from the original mainland species, and they were also different from each other. The finches on each island showed distinct variations in their overall size, beak shape and claw size. These differences were attributed to the differing food sources available on the various islands of the Galapagos. Some of the birds had long thin beaks and sharp claws suited to catching and eating insects, while others had large powerful beaks suitable for cracking open nuts. Because of the distances between the islands, breeding between different species of finch was unlikely and Darwin concluded that the finches must have evolved over time from the original mainland species to suit the conditions found on each individual island. In all, 13 of the birds brought back by Darwin were identified as being entirely new species, all similar to each other, but with definite variations from their common ancestor. Darwin proposed that the variations seen both within and between the finch species arose by chance, 
Variations which gave any individual a competitive advantage made them more likely to survive and therefore reproduce, outcompeting those with less advantageous characteristics. Darwin called this theory natural selection, and he published it in his book On the Origin of Species in 1859. Evolution by natural selection is now widely agreed to be the most accurate theory to explain the origin and diversity of all life on Earth. In this video, you have learned how the finches of the Galapagos Islands led to the development of the theory of evolution by natural selection. Is evolution of these birds still happening? See what you can find out. Okay, this slide will summarise what you've just heard in the video and the ideas we've discussed so far. So when the timer begins, I just want you to read through the five statements and try and write down the words or pair of words that would fit under the purple boxes. There should be enough time within the three minutes for you to then read back over them and check they make sense. And with about 30 seconds remaining, I will just read through them if you're struggling with any of the words and see if you can work them out with me actually narrating those statements to you. So three minutes starting now. Okay, you've got about one minute remaining. I'm just going to read through each statement and see if that makes it a little bit easier if you're struggling. So statement one, organisms in a species show something in their characteristics and compete for resources. So that's box number one. Statement two, organisms with the most something characteristics for the environment are more successful something and therefore likely to survive and reproduce. So box two and box three. Statement three, this idea is known as something and there's three words under box four or natural selection. Statement four, successful organisms survive and something passing on the for the characteristics that made them successful less well adapted organisms do what? So statements five, six and seven. And the final statement, over time, beneficial characteristics become more common in the population and the species changes. This is called what? And that's box number eight. Okay, let's see what you should have got. So box number one, 
Organisms in a species show variation in their characteristics and compete for resources. Box number two. Organisms with the most suitable characteristics for the environment are more successful competitors and therefore likely to survive and reproduce. This idea is known as survival of the fittest or natural selection. Successful organisms survive and reproduce passing on the genes for the characteristics that made them successful. Less well adapted organisms die out or you might have put become extinct. Over time beneficial characteristics become more common in the population and the species changes. This is called evolution. If you want to pause the video and make a note of those five statements, it does give you a nice summary paragraph of natural selection and evolution. So, using the information you've just written down, I want you to summarise Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection in 30 words or less. And I've given you five bullet points just to help you. Three minutes starting now. Try to do this without looking at the notes you've just made if you wrote down the notes from the previous slide. Okay, now I'm going to give you another minute because that time I wasn't quite set for three minutes, was it? OK, I'm just going to leave that activity there because the next few slides will actually allow you to use what you've done for that activity to answer some exam questions. So we're going to apply what you've just written down or your knowledge to this exam question. And we're just going to explain how natural selection occurs. So read through what you've just put, amend it to answer that question. But I just want you to see how much this can feature in the exam and some examples of exam questions that do ask you to do exactly what you've done in the previous activity. So I'm going to give you a little bit of time just to reread for your notes from the previous slide and just to make sure we're in a format that would answer that question. <laughs> 
Okay, so your minute's nearly up. Okay, what did you come up with? Let's have a look what the mark scheme asked for. So it asked us to talk about, firstly, variation. So you might have said variation between organisms within a species. You might have said there's variations between individuals within a population. But the key word you were looking for for the first mark was just variations occur. If you've put mutations, that's OK. But mutations aren't caused by a change in conditions. Mutations are actually just a mistake in the copying of the genes. So you could have had mutations may occur, but the, what we were really looking for was variations occur between organisms within a species. Then for the second mark, we were looking for some reference to those that are most suited to the environment will survive, or those that are fittest to survive in the conditions, or those that have the most desirable characteristics will survive. But the second mark was for something about being best suited individuals and those being the ones that will survive. And the third mark is then for saying that the genes from those individuals will be passed on to offspring or passed on to the next generation. And again, you could have had mutation would be passed on in the genes, but really we were looking for variations between organisms within a species. The mark one would be most suited to the environment or to the conditions or most likely to survive for the second mark. And these genes or these alleles would be passed on to future generations or to the offspring. So three mark exam question, dead simple, explain how natural selection occurs. So now we're going to look at some of the specific terminology that you need to be aware of if you're going to get full marks in evolution exam questions. So specifically, what does the term species mean? And I'm looking for a definition and I'm just going to give you 30 seconds. OK, time's up. What did you come up with? So the exact definition, a species is a group of organisms in which two can reproduce to produce fertile offspring. And the key words that are in bold there are reproduce and fertile offspring. Just because two individuals from a population can reproduce, it doesn't mean they are from the same species unless the offspring produced are fertile, meaning they can go on to have offspring themselves. So you might want to pause the video and write that down. It has come up on a few exam papers in recent years as a two mark definition. So if members of the same species become too different in phenotype, and phenotype just means physical characteristics, and it is a word that you will come across more later on in your studies, particularly if you're on triple science. What might happen? So if members of the same species become too different in phenotype, physical characteristics, what might happen? And again, I'm just going to give you 30 seconds to gather your ideas. Think about the species definition from the previous slide as that may help you. OK, awesome. What did you come up with? So there's a few things that might happen. Firstly, they could no longer interbreed to produce fertile offspring. So on the previous slide, we talked about species as being two individuals that can reproduce to produce fertile offspring. 
If those species became too different, they could no longer breed to produce fertile offspring because they have formed two new species and this process is known as speciation. So as soon as reproduction between two individuals does not produce fertile offspring, we can say that speciation has occurred. OK, just a progress check then to gather together what we've learned. So four questions. If you want to write them down and answer them, you can. If you want to put your answers in four sentences, you can. I'm going to give you three minutes and this will make a summary for this lesson. OK, time's up. So who proposed the theory of evolution by natural selection? Well, it's the chap that the lesson started with, Charles Darwin. What does evolution mean? Evolution is the change in the inherited characteristics of a population over time. And again, that's a definition that I've seen come up on exam papers. What is a species? A group of organisms in which two can reproduce to produce fertile offspring. And if members of the same species become too different, what might happen? Well, they can no longer successfully interbreed and we get a new species and the process is called speciation. OK, the peppered moths is one of the most famous examples of evidence of evolution by natural selection. During the Industrial Revolution, Lots and lots of new industries were developed all over England. And what happened is as those new industries started working, more and more air pollution was pumped out into the atmosphere. And it was in the days when we didn't know as much about air pollution and there weren't as many restrictions on air quality around factories 
And in some areas, particularly in cities such as Manchester, Birmingham, London, the air was thick with pollution and smog. Now, what happened is the peppered moths were existing in these areas around these towns and around these cities. And the peppered moths were a pale grey colour. Now, a few of the peppered moths were mutations that suffered a genetic mutation which actually made them a darker colour. There was only a very, very small number of these darker moths. But what happened? As these factories churned out more and more air pollution, it became advantageous for the moths if you were one of the mutation moths that had the darker coloration. The reason for that was all the buildings were covered in this smog and this soot and they're all blackened. So it meant if you were black or you were darker, you were more camouflaged, less likely to be spotted by a bird and less likely to be eaten. So what happened is around the time of the Industrial Revolution and after the Industrial Revolution started, it became an advantage to become this dark coloured peppered moth. So the numbers of the dark coloured peppered moths massively increased because they survived and they reproduced and they passed on the genes for being darker in colour to their offspring. But if you were the lighter coloured moths as the majority of the moths were you actually had a disadvantage and you were easier to spot by the birds so you were less likely to survive and around the times of the industrial revolution the peppered moth species changed from being mainly this light colour with a few mutant black moths to being mainly black moths with a few remaining lighter coloured moths and this was purely because of the Industrial Revolution, human activity and the environment in which these moths were trained to survive in changing. So therefore, it became advantageous to be the darker colour. After the Industrial Revolution, when factories had to clean up their act and air pollution was, you were getting fined for air pollution and the buildings were no longer covered in this mucky soot, the species changed again. Because after the Industrial Revolution, when the clean-up campaign started, it then became a disadvantage to be the darker colour because you stood out on the now lightened buildings. So it was then advantageous to be the lighter colour and those moths started to not get eaten and survive because they were now camouflaged again and the species went full circle. So I'm from being predominantly lighter coloured to being predominantly darker coloured to going back to being predominantly lighter coloured. So it's a good example of how the situation in species can change when the conditions around it changes. <laughs>
You might think that a species uh, is a species and is unchanging, but this example shows very graphically how that's not the case, that a species can change over time, and in this case, it can change very rapidly over time. That's happened because the environment has been changing, is a sort of really obvious example of evolutionary change that is pretty incontrovertible. As the peppered moths are evidence of evolution by natural selection. The moth on the left was what the peppered moths looked like before the Industrial Re Revolution, and the peppered moth on the right was what it looked like after the Industrial Revolution. So we're going to use the information to explain how peppered moths are evidence of evolution by natural selection. So which moth had a survival advantage during the Industrial Revolution? How did the characteristic help the moth? What were these moths then able to do? And what happened to those without the survival advantage? And I'm just going to give you a little bit of time just to come up with a statement or an answer to each one of those four questions. Okay, I've given you one minute. If you need any longer, just pause the video. But which moth had a survival advantage during the Industrial Revolution? Well, it was the darker coloured moths because they were better adapted to survive. Or the darker ones could hide in the dirty, polluted environment. You might have said dark is the survival of the fittest. Or you might have just said the darker ones because they are better camouflaged. The characteristics that help them survive mean that they can breed and they can pass on their genes. You might have used the word reproduce and pass on their genes to their offspring or future generations, but pass on their genes is fine. The light coloured moths were more easy to see on the smoky surfaces, so they got eaten because they weren't camouflaged because the birds could see the light ones more easily. As the environment became cleaner or less smoky, the light ones could hide easier and those which survive go on to breed or increase the population. And just to finish off, I've just given you the evolution by natural selection notes again that you did as an uh, activity looking what was behind the purple boxes earlier. If you wrote this down at that stage in the video, that's fine. But if you didn't, this just make a really concise summary of natural selection. And as you've seen from the exam questions, it can come up regularly. And it do, when it does come up, it can be worth as many as six marks. So it's certainly worth pausing the video now and getting these notes down. And that concludes the first lesson for evolution. We have now got evidence for evolution, which is the next lesson, which you can watch straight after this one, or you can have a break and you can come back to it. Well done. Some really key ideas for evolution here and some really easy marks to pick up on your exams if you just learn the order of events for natural selection.